Good afternoon, traders. Welcome to the London, the New York webinar. Sorry. So here's here's what I'm gonna offer you guys to do. I think this should work. I, I've been looking at all the charts. Not very much change in many of the charts uh, from this morning. This morning webinar I haven't uploaded in YouTube. I have uploaded in YouTube. I don't know if if it's if it's available right now for you guys to see. Yes, it should be. Yep. We can. I just need to choose which thumbnail it is. I think we can use this one. I'll use the same one. And it's actually available there. So let me take this off. It's in YouTube. You guys could see it there. That is this morning's webinar. Not much change from this morning. So what I'm going to do today is I'm not going to go through all the charts. I will leave more time for questions. I'm going to go through the charts pretty fast. So I'm going to go through those that I think are very important that has a trade set up in them or has a trade that is coming pretty fast. And then you can make the decision, right, uh, to watch everything on YouTube. If you watch this morning's webinar, you're pretty much going to see everything if you miss it. So I'll go through the dollar index. I'll go pretty fast from some of them. Dollar index still going up. We're looking at this pattern as either a corrective structure breaking that top. Remember this morning I said they would likely break this top. And then we would look for reversals because we're having divergence here. So... When they break the top, at that point, we will start looking for if there is a possibility for reversals to the, to the opposite direction. If it's a continuation pattern, what you would be looking for, if they break this top and wants to keep going up, what you would be looking for is a pullback like this before it goes. Right? So this will take about two days, and you will have the next big trade up in the next couple of days. Very rarely, you will see this keep going nonstop. Right? As, and, and looking at this pattern, I'm more inclined for the downside. I'll go pretty fast. Now, Euro, we're looking for the same thing. Euro is coming to point where, you know, a 618 retracement fit. And this had made a one, two, three. If you're a pattern guy and you like patterns, you'll probably do this, right? The people who trade pattern would likely do this, and they'll be looking for this pattern at the 618 to buy at the 618, right? Basically, I don't do that. And I'll tell you why I don't do that. Because if you do that, you're supposed to be coming to the 270, right? That, that, that should be your buy here and your stop. The, the bottom here and you're looking for it to go there, right? The reason I don't do that is because sometimes this this leg, this 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 impulse goes beyond the 618. It could come to the 786. And if you're using a small stop, you're likely going to be taken out and then watch it goes, right? That is very possible. That happens pretty often. And if you're not doing that, right? If, if you if, What you need to do is wait for it to bounce. I always wait for it to bounce correct and then i'm in the trade to go see it has to bounce it has to correct and then i'm in the trade to go so i'll pretty much get in right around the same area you're getting i'll use a smaller stop and i'll have a more advantage of the trade going when i get in the trade right i'm not trying to get in the trade before everybody else that's not my point my point is it has to prove it's going to go in the direction I wanted to go before I trade it. Why we didn't take that one down this morning? Remember, we said it's likely it's going to go down. First, it is already broken. The second is the risk to reward of that trade was no good. And if you take trades like this, I don't take them. Even if you got in, you would have got in somewhere here. You would have never got in at the top there. You probably would have got in here. This is where your, this is your target, and your risk would be here. So for me, that's a no good risk to reward trade. I don't take them. I rather wait for this to bounce here and then I take it to the upside, right? So that's what you're looking for. And the pung, you're looking for pretty much the same thing. I think the pung is already about to bounce. We may see the pung trade happen very soon. So I'm going to just rush through. I'm looking for this to break, pull back, go, right? Aussie. Aussie, nothing new. If it starts to consolidate in here, we look for a sell. If it bounces, we'll have to wait for an impulse, a correction, and then buy. Right now, you really don't have nothing in Aussie. I think it's consolidating now. They're in some kind of a consolidation zone. If you're a very aggressive trader and very experienced trader, you may even want to take it as it goes up, right? You may want to trade within the structure. If you're not that aggressive and you're not that experienced, you don't want to take those small trades, right? You really, you really have to have the appetite for, for risk to be able to handle them, right? The, Remember what we said about New Zealand this morning and about forming this pattern? Watch the webinar. It's amazing. Remember I said you want to, from the way I'm seeing this, we're likely going to be channeling at the low here, right? 
And if that happens, we're going to be looking for an upside rather than the downside. So if you're in this morning, you're watching live how patterns actually work. Right? Um, is it okay? Sound is okay for everyone? Let me get a couple of yeses to be sure it's working. Okay, great. Thank you. That's okay. That's enough. So somebody tell the trader, uh, trader 1043. If you type your name, we'll have a name for you. I don't know how we can call you 1043. And 1050, no sound. So tell them how to get sound. So you see what we have? We have a bounce. And as you can see from this morning, it actually did what we expected to do. And it's not magic. It's very simple. If you know patterns, you know how they behave. You start looking at a structure and you can tell what it's going to do. And that is the amazing thing about learning structures. I was here sitting when this was bouncing and I was thinking about buying it here. In another probably day, I would have probably done it. Today, I didn't do it because I'm it's it's the first week of the year and I'm not so aggressive as yet. So I'll leave it to go. What I'll wait for is when they come back here, I want to see how they come to the top and make a decision whether it's a sell or whether it's a break, consolidation, and then we will buy. So we may not get the trade until tomorrow. It's either a buy or it's either a very short sell. The sell is very aggressive. The sell now becomes less interesting. The buy is, is the key because if they make this pattern, they're likely going to break to the upside. Right? So this is an interesting one for you to keep your eyes on. And remember, New Zealand is in this. So I will go to the Euro New Zealand. Remember what we said about the Euro New Zealand this morning? We're not interested in the buy, even though this big green candle was going up, because there's likely it's going to go back down. And if you're interested in a sell, here was your sell opportunity. This was a trade that we talked about this morning. The lines are still there for you. And this was going up, and I said, you want to be careful, because if this goes up, this pattern tells us it's going to come down. You're not in a buy. So are you interested in the sell? Remember what I said about the sell? The sell is likely going to be doing this. Come here, and you could be going back up. So if you take the sell, if you take the sell from this morning, what you need to do is Get it to plus one as soon as you can, especially when you come to this fit level. I will post, it's already on YouTube. I'll just give you guys at the end of the video. Let me just run through this very fast and we'll have time for all of that. So you can see the magic of how wave pattern works and how we, we don't take trades that are very high risk. See that? It told us this morning it's going to go down. It's going down. Let's go through. The Pong New Zealand was a very similar structure. Remember what I said? not interested in the buy it's going up i'm not interested in the buy and the reason i'm not interested in the buy this pattern here is telling me it's looking more downside now we're looking at a corrective structure in the euro new zealand probably if this i, I don't anticipate the break of the low so i'll be looking still for an upside but it's in a four hour i still think this thing has the potential to go up and the bigger trade is to the upside for me what if, just what if this is going to go down and we'll be looking at this structure here? Then I will be interested in a, in a cell, but not that cell that we are looking at, not this small cell we are looking at. Much bigger cell structure. Right now, I don't see that. Right now, what I see is a buy structure. So unless I see a bigger setup, potentially for a longer run on a cell, I'll be interested. Right? I'm looking at a longer run on the buy. The buy side is giving me potentially a very, very huge buy setup. And that is why I'm interested in the buy until I see something else. Did I, did I take the buy? Nope. Remember what we said this morning? Likely done. Same thing with the Pong New Zealand. This structure also could be corrective. And it may be one of those expanding flat patterns where they come lower here and then they start to go up. Right? So if you want to sell, you do have a sell opportunity. There is a small sell opportunity in here, probably in the 15 minute. You can take it if you wish. Keep this line here because you're going to move it to plus one when it comes to this line. You had a break of this structure. You had a consolidation. You could literally sell it right now. Put a stop above here. And when it comes here, put it to plus one. That is break even. Put it to break even here. 
and watch it comes to this, about the 55th. So your trade is a very small trade. This is your trade. This is your risk. And you can look for it to go back up as a one, two, three pattern before it goes back up. Right? I'm not interested in that trade. Maybe a nice trade, but I'm not interested in it right now. At least not today, not now. I don't like these small trades. I'm looking for the bigger potential trade to the upside, which is finish the correction here. Show me it's a correction. Prove you're going up, and I'll be in that trade to the upside because the bigger trade for me is actually this one. Not a little piece going back down, but the bigger trade to the upside. Right. So my focus is a little different from most traders who are looking at these small trades and well, well the candle is moving, why aren't we selling it? Right? You can sell it, you probably get fifty, sixty, maybe even a hundred pips. Your risk to reward is one to one. So what I'm looking for is not the amount of pips I make, but the risk to reward that I'm getting, because you're gonna be risking about a hundred pips for that trade. And that is important. When you see anybody showing you only pip counts on their record, run far from that. What they need to show you on their record is the actual live account that is winning. Because you could make thousands of pip, but if you're risking thousands of pip to make those thousands of pip, it has no value. You will eventually blow your account out. So people may say, well, I made 100 pip today. Great, that, that sounds very nice. What you're not telling me is how much did you risk to make that 100 pips? Because if you risk 100 pips to make that 100 pips, for me, that's not a really good trade. Nothing amazing about it. Amazing is if you risk 10 pips and you make 100 pips. And if you're putting a 10 pip stop on your risk, I am running very far from you. Because 10 pip stops, you're going to definitely lose. You're going to have a very bad win-loss ratio. You're going to lose 90% of your trade. Right? Yep, song is on. A lot of people seem to be having song problem. I will give you the YouTube video at the end if you guys wait. We'll show you the link and it'll give you everything. Is everybody else having song problem? Jay, can you do you have song right now? Okay, everybody else is okay. So somebody tell Jay that this is his side. Because the second person, actually his name is on, so he, he was here before. He should not have some problem. Okay, good. Let's go. So I wanted to show you why those two trades this morning was not interesting to me. Although they were going up and a lot of people ask, well, well is it a buy? Is it a buy? And I'm like, no, not as yet. Not ready. All right? So let's go. We were in the New Zealand. Let's go now to the Swiss. Swiss going up, remember I said it's likely it's going to go up. They may even get to that level, but not interesting. Right now, I'm looking at this pattern, and I'm thinking this looks like a very small one-hour ending diagonal structure. I think a lot of you know these structures. So there's a likelihood they will break it if they break it. You never take an ending diagonal to be an ending diagonal unless it breaks the structure. So it has to first break the structure, consolidate, and we can look for this straight to the downside. We would look for this trade here, but that's not the trade you actually want. You will put it to plus one, and you're watching for them to break that structure, right? If they break that structure, your trade becomes this trade. See here? You're going to take the trade from here to that trend line, and if they break, this is the trade you want, right? Not the smaller trade within here. You're looking for the bigger trade. That trade will give you a wonderful let me see about five to one risk to reward. So because if, 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 if it breaks, you will get in somewhere there and you're going to keep the trade to this level. That is about 511 pips. And you would be risking something like about 50, 60 pips. So easily a 10 to one risk to reward. That is the kind of trade we look for. So watch it there. If it starts to break that very small one hour pattern, Right? If they go to the upside, I'm still not interested. I wasn't interested this morning, and I'm not interested right now. Right? I'm interested in a bigger trade that will give me 10 to 1. I'm not chasing these little candles. Right? And that's the difference in how you should trade. US CAD, let's see what this is doing. Okay, it looks like we may get a sell in the CAD eventually. It's not going anywhere, and if it's not going up, it will likely go down. That, that's a simple analysis. If something is not going up, 
it is likely going to go down. If CAD breaks this structure here, this trend line here, I would look for a sell to this trend line. That will be my initial trade with a stop above there. That will be my initial trade. But I will not take the trade off unless I see structurally that it could go one more up. Because the trade I'm looking for is actually this trade. So if I get in in this trade here, I would keep it for break and coming back to the low here. So that means I'll be risking something like about, let's say I put it above the top there. I don't know, about 6 to 50, 6 to pips, 6 to pips probably. And I'll be looking for a trade that will come about 406 to 7, right? That would be my trade. If, it, if I get a break even, I get a break even on it. If it breaks and it comes to this trend line and go back up, I'll take the break even. But I'm looking for the bigger trade. So CAD is looking downside. Swiss has the potential to come down here. Yen, what is Yen doing? Let's see. Yen is already in the downside, right? Yen is already going down. It's consolidating right now. It broke this morning. If you didn't chase the candle, you're getting a consolidation. If you're in it, you probably just wait, live through the consolidation, put a stop here. It's probably going to do some consolidation here and drop, consolidation and drop. So we're looking for more downside in the end, right? Maybe even a bigger consolidation than drop. I'm not in the yen traders yet because it didn't do very much for me. If, if it makes the next up move and show me a nice pattern, I'll probably take it. I'll post it out for you guys if I see it, right? If you're in the trade, all you, the worst could happen is you get a plus one trade. Depends on where you enter, right? You could even take it out and then wait for the consolidation back, to move back to the top here, which could probably happen. And you get a one, two, three, and then you get the trade to the downside, right? I don't see it as a reversal as yet. I think it's just more of a consolidation still in play. So that is for the majors. We're anticipating, I'm looking for Euro upside. Off of the 618, I'm looking for Pong upside. I'm looking for Aussie, mostly consolidation, upside consolidation, not breaking the top, but moving up slowly. So it's going to be a faster move on the Euro and the Pong to the upside. Aussie is probably going to go slow. New Zealand upside when they finish this pattern. If and when they break this pattern, I'm looking for some upside at least. And then we'll see what happens. And, then, and this, the, the, the Swiss CAD yen downside. Those are, the, those are the trade with huge potentials. The shorter trades is what they're doing right now. They're making very small up and down moves, which you can trade, by the way, but not very interesting. Uh, we look, let's look at the Euro also because this is one everybody's interested in. Unless it breaks, we're not interested. Remember this morning we talked about it. Unless it breaks to the upside, I'm not interested. Shorter trade to the downside, possible. You probably, if you're an aggressive trader, you probably would have seen this. You got a break, you can take the trade, but it's not going to go far. If you get 10 pips, you're lucky. We're looking for the upside, right? When it breaks this trend, we're looking for the upside move, not the downside. So let's look at the Pong Oz because that is the one I posted and everybody keep asking me, are you in the trade? Are you in the trade? Guys, if you're asking me if I'm in the trade, I would not give you the trade because you have no clue what you're, what you're doing. Remember this morning what we said, you have to have a solid close. So let's let's let me let's analyze this. The first candle did not close. The second candle did not close. The third candle did not close. The fourth candle did close. And then you wait for four. This was the close. This is one 15 minute candle. This is the first 15 minute. This is the second 15 minute candle. See that? If the second 15 minute candle stays right here, the third one and the fourth one goes here. Yep we can look for this trade to go up. If they do come back down, what you'll be looking at is this. The reason you're not jumping in the trade, what you can be looking at because of the reversal of that is you can be looking at a probably one, two, three wave pattern before they go back up. So what we would do in that case is we'll move this across here. We'll allow this to come down which is what it's doing. You can even want, if, you want, if you're aggressive enough, you can trade this down to about the 5th to 5th, maybe even 618, and then the upside. And you're going to have this pattern here. You're going to have one, let me use a different color, red probably, blue, orange, yellow, one, I have yellow already, blue. One, two, three-wave pattern. And now you have this going up. See? 
So not because it break this smaller pattern means it's going to go immediately. That doesn't happen. Sometimes, the, sometimes it gets a more complex, very complex pattern as a correction. This correction could be anything. It could come here, it could go back like this, it could come back like this, it could do this, it could do this, and then it could take off, right? Then it could take off to the upside, sorry. Right? So you have to have system. You have to have a strategies how not to be caught in these trades. And that is what I could train my traders to do. We have strategies that prevent us from being caught in the trades like that. So I'm not in it. None of my traders should be in it because if they follow the rules that I give them, and if, if you listen to me very carefully this morning, you should not be in it. Because this morning I said we want a solid close on top and only the last hourly candle close. We want to make sure the next hourly candle does not reverse that total candle. The first 15-minute candle reversed it. So that doesn't look, the very first 15-minute candle almost reverses. So we still need to wait for three or four more 15-minute candles to see what they're going to do. Looks to me like they're going to make a downside. Right? If they're going to make an upside, what we're going to do now is we'll put this here and we'll wait to see if they're going to break this top. Let's see what they're doing. If, they, if they're not going up, they're going to go down. If they make an attempt here, they pull back. They make an attempt there, they're pulling back, and they're not going up. They're likely going to go down and then up. The correction, it's not over. It's a very complex corrective structure that is not over. So patience. When it does go, it's going to be a wonderful trade, a very, very big trade. So let's wait on it. Don't rush it. Pong New Zealand, we looked at that already. Sorry, let's, uh, Euro Oz, did we look at the Euro Oz? Yep, it's coming down, so we will wait on that. Uh, we will skip the rest. Euro Yen is an interesting one. So let me, let me look at the Euro Yen for you in this time frame. We're still looking for that upside based on this structure, right? We're assuming that this is still going to go up because it's looking very corrective. There is only one option where this changes. Let me show you what I'll be looking for that could change that structure. This structure could still be, what I'm looking for actually, the bigger structure is this. This is an A wave correction. I'm looking for an A, B, C, and then I'll be looking for a C wave to the downside. After that, we'll be looking for a big trade. Let's go, let's make it green. We'll be looking for a big trade to the upside. Big one, as big as this, going up, right? So this becomes your impulse. This becomes your correction. And this becomes your impulse, right? That is what we are looking for. That might not happen if this breaks the low. If this one breaks this low, that will not happen. What will happen is this is going to come down here. Let me use a different color. Let me use blue. This is going to come down here. And then it is going to start the up trade immediately. We're, what we're going to have, why is this doing that? Why is it doing that? So what we're actually going to have in effect is an A, a B, and a very slow C wave that comes here and then take off. This is, this is a pattern that we know, but it's very rare. As, as a matter of fact, on this structure, I didn't expect this pattern to happen. So I'm still anticipating this up move before it comes down and then go back up. This is a very simple A, B, C pattern for a B wave structure, right? Now, the B wave structure may be only this piece, put it in a daily. It may be only this piece here, one, two, three. That may be all the B wave structure. In that case, we're gonna break the low. Now, remember there's a big trade to the upside. So breaking this low here, if you're, in, if you're looking for a sell and the break of that low, the minute they break that low, you have to be careful because that could trigger the reaction to the upside. Pretty strong, right? A very, very strong reaction to the upside could happen. So if you're gonna be selling this here, what you want to do for a sell is you want this to pull back and then make a drop. So you get a better risk to reward trade and you get a better trade before it turns to the upside. So by all means, I'm looking for a bigger trade to the upside. There are only two questions here now. Am I gonna be getting this trade? If you make a copy of this, that didn't make a copy. 
Let me just clone it then. Am I going to be getting that trade or am I going to be getting this small one? This small one would mean a complex B wave pattern, this here. This would mean this comes break the low and then take off for a C wave. Whichever, I'm more keen in the upside right now, not so much in that downside. One out of those two patterns will play out. So for me now, the only question is which one and when, right? I'm not interested in a sell right there. As a matter of fact, it's very risky, but you can do it. You can actually take a buy at the 86 fib, right? So here is what you will do. If you buy the 886 fib, you will put a stop under here because this will become this becomes your risk. If they break that low, anything could happen, right? All right. So if they break the low, this is what your risk should be. And if they don't, you're going to be going up for that trade to the upside, right? There's a good one. So you should risk very small on trades like this. I don't like to do that. As a matter of fact, pattern people like to do that. And here's what they do. One, two, three. You know what they're supposed to do? They're supposed to put the pattern like this and let it go. Right? This is how a pattern is supposed to be. But then because actually they, they did that the first time by putting it here, this did not go. Then they dragged it here. That did not go. Then they dragged it lower. So what if this doesn't go? What if this is the C wave and that doesn't go? Well, then you lose the trade, right? And that is why patterns really don't work because they're all hindsight. They're, you know, you're looking at something that you keep moving because you're expecting that. And the reason you keep moving that is because you're not looking at structure. If you're looking at structure, you can understand how these structures develop, right? So what we are looking at is a potential of two things happening now, either going up or coming down. The buy at the 618, if you want to take the trade, it's not a bad trade because two things could happen here right now. They will either start pulling back like this or they will reverse. Either way, you can get a break-even trade, right? If they just pull back like this, you put it to break-even. And when they fall, you take the break-even trade. You may even get out and take a sell. If they go back very sharply, you're in a good trade. Worst could happen is your risk is very small because you're looking for a bigger target to the upside. Worst could happen is you risk this for this. So, not a bad trade, right? And if you risk this and lose it and they break the low, you still look for a potential buy. But now you'll be looking for the buy based on the way we trade, not a pattern, but by the way we trade, right? Which is structure. So, if you want to take the trade, go ahead, make your choice. I show you what is what are the possibilities for that trade, right? Decide how much you want to risk, and you can go ahead and take the trade. What else do you want to look at here? I will skip most of these. I think we will go to the Aussie Swiss. The rest of them, you guys will watch at the webinar. The webinar, nothing much change in those trades. They're pretty much the same as the as this morning webinar, and you will have the access to that webinar and thing. We are interested in this trade when it breaks. As a matter of fact, we're very interested in this trade when it breaks. Because this is this trade has been going up, 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 and it's going up. And if you're very aggressive, this is a trade. If you're very aggressive, you can take the trade right now. So let me show you what you would have to do and what the trade is if you're very aggressive. So the trade we are looking for is for this trade to come down here. It will make a correction and it will probably keep going down. That's the anticipation of what this trade should behave. Here. Now, what you're going to be risking if you take the trade here, you'll have to put a stop above this stop. Now, this thing could still crawl up here some more and then come down. So you can do two things. If you're very if you if you're very aggressive and you don't want to have a very big stop, you don't want to put a stop here because that you know that that's not a very good place to put a stop. You can come back to the four hour. Put the stop above this stop here. It is just above this stop because we broke this structure. You're going to enter here. This is your risk. Whatever percentage you want to risk in, you will calculate it to know what lot size you're going to enter in here. And the trade is going to be going down for this 270 target, which is here. So this would be your trade. And that is actually a good trade. The chances of this trade going is very high. 
Now we are taking an aggressive trade because we are entering the trade before it breaks out. And the reason I'm, I say you can do that is because if you notice every time they come to the top, they come down back, they come to the top, they come down back. We are at the top here now. The likelihood is they're gonna come back to this low. And if they come back to the low very slow, if they do something like this very slow, and they come here, you put the trade to break even. That is right here, break even. So if they go back up, you get a break even trade. If they break this, you have a good trade. You're in a business. So taking the trade at this point where it is right now is also a good idea. Just to make sure we're in the same note, let me see if my, my station is closed. But I would take the trade. It doesn't matter. I'll take it out. The next hourly candle close will open right around the same spot and I'll take the trade. Right? And we'll see what happens to it. So what you can do is if you want to try this, take it very, very small. Take it with a very, very small risk so you're not worried about the risk. Right? The chances are we're going to watch it come down here and then we'll decide how it comes down. I'll post it in, um, in trading view if you need to close it. If I close the trade when it comes to the trend line, I'll let everybody know. I'll post it in trading view that that trade is closed. So I'll post this out in trading view, but I'll post this out not as we taking the trade here, but as selling the breakout. And those of you who take it with me, I will tell you if I close it in the heads up. If I'm still in it, if I still keep it, I'll let you know. So your stop should be above the 680. I think a good place to put a stop would be above the 786. Because rarely, they, you know, you see them go so fast up above this. We're not expecting such a big move today above that 786, right? So that is the risk and the reward is way down at this 270. No, the reward is even lower. The reward is at this 270. The daily 270, let me bring it back. Yep, the reward is at this 270 here, this bigger one, not this smaller 270 we're looking at. No, there's a bigger 270, where is it? Four hours, sorry. Not this 270, the reward is at this 270. So let me put a line where that reward is so you will remember. We're looking to keep the trade to this 270. Not this 270 here. That's the smaller 270. That's this one. We're looking to keep it to this 270. All right? So let's see. That is a trade you can take very small and see what happens to it. Let's go. Aussie yen, we're, nothing is happening. We'll skip it. We're waiting for them to consolidate out of the trend. Aussie CAD, I don't think we do anything here as well. Nope. New Zealand CAD, we skipped. Um, what else? What else was very interesting? Pong Yen. Oh, yeah, let's go look at Pong Yen. Pong Yen actually just kept going. I didn't take the trade. I didn't manage to get in the trade because the only place you could have got in the trade in was here. That, that stop one hour close, three sideways. That is the only place you had four, fifteen, three, fifteen minute candles sideways, right? One, two, three, four. So that would have been your entry, and it's no good. You, I think you know you're actually consolidating there. Probably they put it a break even and leave it. There is a chance it's going to go down more because you're consolidating in here. See, they're making some consolidation in there. There are chances it's going to go more. Put it in a one hour. You're getting some divergence here, and on a four hour, we're anticipating a deeper pullback. So let me show you what the four hour looks like. Let's go in the daily first. The daily trade will probably, we're looking at this this low here. There's a low there, there's a low here. They could probably bring it to about this level low. That's a 618 of this fit. Right, this down, up, and you're in this impulse coming here. So somewhere here is where it could end. So you may still have a trade down to this level, and then we will look for this to come back up. Right, so there may be a smaller trade to the downside. We do have divergence. You have to be very careful of that. We have divergence between those two. You can see it very clearly here. Four hour, you got to watch this. It could go some more. They may want to correct during the night. And if they do that, you'll have a break even trade. If they correct back up to the top here, this would be a better trade on this move down. Right? There is a chance they could do that. This correction, see that? There is a chance they could correct back to the top and then come down. Because on the one hour, we do have divergence. On the one hour, you have some divergence in here. You can see that. So there is a chance that this will likely probably do this and then start to correct. Back to the trend and then down. If it does this, we're going to trade. If you're already in the trade, just put it to break even. Don't take it off because it could just keep going down, right? If you're already in it, just keep it. 
Euro yen, Pong yen, we looked at. We looked at all the majors. Um, let's look at silver for those who are interested. If you're interested, silver is just consolidating within this this um, thing here. If you're in the buy, you're in. If you're not in, don't buy anywhere here now. Just waiting to see what the, if this consolidation comes back here, we'll probably look to exit some trades and look for the downside. New Zealand Swiss. No, I think it was the Aussie Swiss we were interested in. I don't even have the New Zealand Swiss chart. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I have it. Yep, New Zealand Swiss also is a good one, but it's not ready as yet. We'll have to wait for this to break to take it, right? We'll have to wait for this to break this structure, and we'll take the breakout. When it breaks, we'll look for this straight to the downside because we broke the, the, we broke the bigger structure already, right? We broke this structure. Sorry, let me put it here. We broke that structure and we are breaking this structure here, right? We broke this one up here. So let this consolidate break and then we can take the trade. We'll we'll take the break of this flag. Right? I don't think it's going to go back up as well. But don't take too aggressive. If you sell here now, this if you sold this already, this is an aggressive trade. You don't want to take two aggressive trades. You want to take one of them only. You don't want to open too many risks and very aggressive trades. Punk chief, I think we stayed out of that this morning. Let me see. Our memory is not so clear in the punk chief. What we did, sorry, punk chief. Nothing. It's just going sideways. I said we are staying out of it. Somebody who was insisting and asking me why we are staying out of it because it's going sideways, right? You have a move here, you have it move down, and you have a move up, and it's not clear to me as yet what it's going to do. So we will wait for. This was a breakout you could have probably taken. It didn't. I, I think you would have got a plus one out of that, or you probably would have taken. You would have lost because your stop was here. But you should have taken a plus one if you were in that trade. Don't keep it because it's not very clear to me. It's looking more like a one, two, three for downside. But that is not clear until it comes back and break. Because if they consolidate again in here, we're going to be looking for more upside. If we get a consolidation like that, it would be more upside. Right now, it's not clear, so I'll just leave it. You leave you leave the ones that are not clear, and you look at the ones that are ready to go, the ones that have good setup and are ready to go. Those are the ones you start looking for trade. So keep most of your focus should be actually on this one. You should have most most of your focus on this because this one is very close. Right, this one is very close. If they start breaking this structure, you can get in that trade, right? If this doesn't come down back to this level and they start breaking this structure, you can get in. But I don't think that is going to happen. I still think that this pattern here is looking downside. You got an impulse, you got a correction, you're looking downside, and they can probably do this, and then we will get the upside. We'll have something like this. So let's see. Actually, I would like them to come down to the 50 because now we will have a better entry and we'll have a very good risk to reward. Right? The lower it comes, if you're looking for a buy, the lower it comes, the better is your risk to reward, right? If you're buying at the higher point, the target doesn't change, right? The risk, the stop loss change, right? So what you want it is to come lower, farther away from the target, so you get a better advantage at it. You have more, more you know, better risk to reward. So those are the ones that are very, very interested. I don't want to go through all of them because you can actually look at the webinar, you go through all them. I don't think we'll post this one out unless we have some interesting questions. So since we have a, a hundred plus people in the room, you guys had a lot of questions yesterday that I didn't get to answer. Any questions today that you would like me to answer? Let's go. We can take some time off. We can take 30 minutes for questions if you have any. Because there are a lot of questions that we couldn't answer. Anybody has any questions? If you don't have questions, we'll probably. Where do you label ways? Do you use another charting software? No. Nope. We label them. We label them in our, our group. Mostly my traders do the labeling. I don't label the charts because I post. Right? But they know the rules of how to label. I could label it in two minutes if I need to. I actually remember most of these patterns, what they look like. So I really don't need to even label them. American stocks, I don't know. I really don't look at stocks a lot because I don't trade them. I, some of my traders trade them. Some of these I have here because people ask me to put them. So here's the thing. If you want to trade a chart that we don't trade in our room, 
there is no problem. The system, the, the, the methodology of analysis doesn't change. Any chart, you analyze it pretty much the same way. So it really doesn't make a difference what chart you're trading. As long as you know how to do it, it's pretty clear to you. You can do it all by yourself. My view in the, in the Swiss yen. I know you guys are going to have some questions. So no questions. We'll probably look at it. Let's go. Daily. Daily Swiss Yen is in this channel. It's more of a channel, and we have a lot of divergence in the channel. So what I'll be looking for, what I'm expecting, is that they're probably going to bounce here and go back to the top. At some point, I think they'll break this channel to the upside. Because if you look at a weekly chart, what you're seeing is kind of a weekly correct. All the Yen pairs, this is what all the Yen pairs look like. They had a very big move up. And they're all in a big correction now. Eventually, they're going to make another big move up on the weekly, right? So if you want, let's look at all the yen pairs. This is a yen pair. They made a big move up, right? You see this? Very big move up. You can actually look when this one started from much lower. So they made a very big move up. They made a correction. They're making a big move up. They're making a correction. And if you look at this correction here in the daily, as you can see, we have divergence here. So at some point, this correction here, this one, two, three pattern, right, is likely going to go back up for a bigger move like this to the upside, right? So the question is, is this correction over? And we don't know that as yet, right? We don't know that. You can look at all the yen pairs. Let's start with the dollar yen. If you look at the dollar yen, you see a similar structure weekly. You get a very similar structure, a big move up, and you're in a corrective phase. After every corrective phase, this one will probably give you some more, maybe even some more sideways like this. And then they're going to make another big move up, which is this move here. Right? So there, after this corrective phase is over, you're going to have a very sharp impulse, which would be something like this, maybe. Something like this, maybe. Right? So you see, after every corrective phase, this was a correction, they have an impulse. This was a correction, they got a sharp impulse. Another correction, an impulse, a sharp impulse, an impulse. We're getting a big correction, so we're going to have a big impulse with a number of corrective phases, so an impulse inside. Right? right now, we're in that structure, all of them. So all of them are doing this sideways move. There is a chance that this structure is probably going to come retest this low here and then give us the upside. So we will have more like a channel like this. See the top there? We'll have something like this and then go up. So that is why we're looking for the yen to the downside. On a shorter term, we're looking for the yen to the downside. Right? We already look at the euro yen for an up move. We look at the, the pong yen, probably going to go up after some down move. So all the yen pairs are showing that kind of a structure. Let's see some more questions. There are a lot of questions that came up. Let's see. Uh, practical question how do you keep track of so many pairs do you use trading view notification to alert you of a line cross or do you personally monitor basically i remember most of these charts i could draw them for you i know what they look like i literally could do it i do i do two webinars daily and i teach on these charts so i've been doing them so long that i remember every single one of them that i trade especially if there's one that i want to trade there's a trade in it all i have to do is remember which one and I trade that one. I don't trade all of them. I don't take all the trades on all of them, but we look at all of them because a lot of my traders look at trade different charts. As a matter of fact, they wanted me to do Mexican peso, um, Norris in here. We, some people wanted us to do, uh, you know, other other charts, and we said, okay, we've got to limit it to some amount. But it's not it's not that difficult to keep track of these charts. Absolutely not. But you don't have to. Actually, to be successful, you don't have to trade so much. You just need to trade one, two, or three charts because they all practically move, right? You're just spreading your risk out too much. I trade mostly, most of the time, I mean, I trade two or three charts, and that's it. I don't take more trades because my total risk is already open. I don't have much more to risk. And if I do, I'll be over-risking, and I'll be over-trading, and I'll likely blow my account up. So most times if I'm already in a trade, I really don't worry. I look at the rest. We make trade calls for traders who are going to trade it. 
who are not in trades as yet. Maybe sometime I take, let's say I buy the euro and nobody else managed to get it, or just two of my traders managed to buy it. And then we see another trade, right? And basically the, the other traders who are not in trade, they could take the other trade. When, the, when you say you take a, a B, that means, when you say you take a B, that means go immediately in profit. Uh, you mean break even. Break even. That is mean you put your stops to break even. That is one pip above the, the, the spread. When it goes against me, if I prefer to go out and stop or manage it. If you have a stop loss and it's coming against you, you let it take you out. That's that, the whole point of the stop loss is to allow it to take you out there because that is where you want to exit the trade. Now, here's the problem with stop losses. A lot of traders are putting it the wrong place. When I put a stop loss, I put a stop loss at a point where I think structurally we are getting a change. The structure that I'm looking at is changing. That is why I need to exit the trade at this point. And if the structure is changing, then I definitely need to enter, exit that trade at that point because I'll be looking at a different structure. If the structure is not changing, then that's okay. It will not take my stop where I'm putting it because my stops are based on the structure only. I don't use the FIB retracement. I, I looked at the retracement in terms of structure. If you, were in the, if you were in the class this morning, that's what we, we looked at. And I showed you again this afternoon at the Pong New Zealand, Euro New Zealand. We looked at the trades. They were moving up. And I said, no, structurally, these things look like they could go down some more. And we didn't take those trades. It has nothing to do with the FIBs. I hardly use FIB retracement as, an, as a point of entry. That is what people who trade patterns do. And that is why most of their trades are wrong. That is why they lose most of their trades. Because if you only take the FIB as a guarantee that this is this 618 or this fifth of FIB is where it's going to go, you're likely going to lose the trade. Like I just showed, if you take that Euro Yen trade at the 618 or the 786, nobody says it could be, you know, it could go lower. That impulse is not over. It could go lower, take you out, and then turn and go in the direction you wanted it to go. Go and click on 100 of those patterns, uh, somebody who is trading pattern, click on 100 of charts. This is what you guys need to do. Click on 100 of his charts and take the stats. See how many times the stops were taking before the chart goes. Maybe it goes in his direction, but did it take a stop first? Very likely, yes. Because if you're selling a 50 or 618 fib and you put the stop in the wrong place, you're likely going to be taken out. Is there a method to identify when the corrections is complete? There is, if you understand what the corrections should look like. You know what is a complete corrective pattern. And that's, that's one of the things. That's easy to know, by the way. If you study Elliott Wave, you will know a lot of those patterns. The problem is, can you identify those patterns in the chart? And that is where, that's what I teach my traders to do. Identify the patterns in the chart. Not just knowing them, but identifying them. Being able to look at the chart and see the patterns. Right? While everybody is looking at this and thinking, well, oh, this thing is going down, right? It's going down. I'm looking at this general pattern in here. And I'm thinking, well, yes, it does have a lot more dung, but then the bigger trade is still to the upside. So can I trade this dung? Yes, yeah, sure, why not? Remember, I was actually making trade calls on, on, on the Pong Yen to the downside when everybody was going crazy in trading view. One guy jumped on his five-minute chart and said, oh, well, he doesn't see it's going up back. It's taking out my stops. He just had a wrong stop. Everybody would remember this. We, 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 had, we first had this, this, this uh, in this one, we were, first we were buying this. Let me put it in the one order to show you. We were buying this to the upside and everybody was going crazy about selling and selling and they were trying to sell this piece. Every time it started to drop, they were selling it. And I keep saying, no, it's a buy until it breaks the top of the A wave. And when it eventually broke, we look at this pattern and I sell it. I think I posted this pattern. Somebody should be able to find this chart. I posted that pattern and said, we're going to go down, right? Because we were looking for that sell, right? So. It's all about patterns. And if you don't know the patterns, you can't identify them. It's simple. If you, don't, if you don't see a wedge, if you don't know what a wedge is, you wouldn't see a wedge. So you have to know what the patterns are. And it's all about that. Uh, when you say we finished that one in terms of uh, which retracement, nope. Is there a method of identifying the correction? Yes, there is. View. I just answered that question. 
zero ones. If you still can't understand, up oh, me, uh, that's that's a whole. You shouldn't say that because a lot of new traders really don't have a clue what corrections are. How do you know it is a sharp flat impulse after correction? How do you know it's a sharp flat impulse after? I, I have no clue what you're talking about. What do you mean sharp flat impulse? It's either sharp or it's either flat. You're saying which one? How would I know which one it will be after the correction? I don't know. I don't even need to know what 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 it's going to be, right? It could be sharp. It could be flat. It doesn't make a difference to me. Absolutely don't. When it starts to go, you will know, and then you will know what to do with your trade. You'll know how to manage your trade, right? So let's suppose it's sharp. Great. You're in, you, you're in profit in, in seconds. If it's flat and it's going very slow, well, you will take longer to get your profit. That's all. No problem. You didn't miss anything. Viewer 181087. If you can type your name in tomorrow, that'd be great. Um, can we do this now or in our next webinar? Let's open a chart you never analyze before and analyze it without the wave details. Sure, why not? Which chart you want? That may be a good experiment. We we'll look at that. That is uh, Bekir Vapor, uh, question. If I can do a chart, you you guys could just type now which chart you want me to look at. You, this is my list of charts that I have, so you can see them in terms of that. And let's look at one. Um, one second. Let's take all the questions while you're typing which chart you want. Not Bitcoin. I I did Bitcoin before. He's talking about a chart that I never see. U.S. Trade. Yeah, I didn't use. I don't use that. U.S. Knock. I don't use that. We could look at one of those two. You guys could decide which one while I'm looking at this. Can we do this now? Up that one. Well, can you always check in your YouTube? Yep, you can always check the YouTube channel. It would be good if you can share that YouTube channel. If you have any social site where you're in a group of traders, you can share it. Let all the traders look at it. That'll be very nice. Let's get more views on those YouTube channels. We only have 2,400, which is not enough. I have 6,000 followers in TradingView and 2,000 people look at the YouTube channel. I'm like, what happened to the rest of the 4,000 traders? Uh, how many the, the Pong New Zealand nice trade? Uh, yeah, nice trade, but I'm not interested in that. And we looked at it. How many pips above below the structure do you really place up? Well, I answered that question. It has nothing to do with how many pips below or above. It has to do with the structure where I put my stops. Thank you for sharing you. Oh, thank you. That's okay. Glad to know. Is there a correlation between the size of the impulse and the size of the retracement? No, there isn't any. There, there absolutely no correlation between impulse and, and, and correction. Though, if you read that anywhere, that's nonsense. Here's how you know it's nonsense. Go test it yourself. If you read it somewhere that this impulse is going to pull back so much to this fib and then it's going to go, test it yourself. And if you do, you will know it's nonsense. Right? I've seen it. I've seen that. And I went and I tested it and I said, oh, that's nonsense. Not working. A correction, here's the thing you guys have to know. Correction is not a price action factor. Correction is a time factor. Correction takes time. It's not important how big the correction in terms of the price action, in terms of the pip size. What is important in correction is how long it's in that correction. That is what is important. That's a key. I'm giving you, I'm giving you a free piece of information that you can use in, to, to enhance your trading. Don't look at correction in terms of how much it came back, 786, 886. Look at correction and how long it's in the correction because that's the basic function of the correction. It's not really the pullback alone. It is the time factor that is in there. What that means, just imagine yourself that, well, you're, 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 a, you're a seller of something. I don't know. You sell cars. So you bought 100 cars and you put them in the market and they sold out pretty fast. So in two weeks, you sold out those cars. Now you need to get the next 100 cars to think. How long would that take you to, to, to get it back, to stock up back 100 cars to sell? Promise you, I promise you, it's going to take you two or three months, not two weeks. First, you have to order the cars. The factory has to produce them for you because I don't think the factory just have cars lying around for you to buy. They're, they, they actually make cars on orders. You have to go to your bigger dealer and then the dealer goes to the factory and then the factory send back to the dealer and then you make arrangement and then you make transportation and then logistics and all of that stuff before, uh, you know, customs and clearance and documents. Before you stock back that next hundred car, it's a month or two. And you sold it all out in a week or two. So it's the consolidation phase. 
is the re is is that re what, the bankers actually call it the accumulation phase. That's where they're accumulating what they've sold or what they've bought, something like that, right? If if it's a buy, they're selling it. If it's a seller, they're buying it, right? It's the accumulation phase that is important, and that takes time. If you sell out everything you had, it takes time to gather it back because you're buying back in smaller portions. You have one big client that's selling, now you're gathering it back for him. And that is the phase, that is what is called a correction phase. Actually, that's where all the transactions are taking place. Most people have the idea that when the candle is moving, that you're getting new transactions. Actually, no. Most of the transactions are happening when the candles are not moving. That is buying and selling happening on an equal basis. That is why the candles are not moving. So you need to focus on that. And if you understand which direction it is very likely going to go, you become a successful trader. And that's what we do. We look at the correction phase and we decide that based on this structure, it is likely going to go up or down. That's it. That's all. Nothing more. So, okay, let's see. Some people, uh, come on, guys. Here's, here's, here's the clue to it. I, when I say it, you have to look at one chart that I don't have. You, Everybody knows I, I put gold and silver out. Why do you put gold? Right? You just see I did the Swiss yen. You put the Swiss yen. You're putting your, here's what you're doing. You're putting your one little piece of information you need above something you can learn for the rest of your life. Pong Yen, we just did it. Why put Pong Yen? Put, the guy question was very clear. Can you take a chart you have never seen before and do it? So let's see. We have the US TRY. We have the US NOC. What else we have? We have TRY 2s. We have Trey. What else we have? New Zealand. Uh, from where from where can I download Victor's MACD? Is it free? Yes, it's free. It's on the it's on Trading View. Uh, I don't know. You can get it. It's just go to where those um Victor. If Victor is in the room, Victor can or some can, can somebody get tell him where to get Victor um MACD from. Give him Victor's um uh, Trading View uh, uh ID so you can go and get it. Rubles I looked at very often. Uh, the SEC and the czar. I, we looked at the czar a couple of times. I think I even have that on. Let's look at the SEC. I've never looked at that. USDSEK, SEK, the, the SEC. The, 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 I think I've never looked at that one. I, I don't think I have that one on. Let me see if I have it here. We have the rubles. We have the Mexican peso. We have nothing much more, but the rest of them, I just deleted them. I think we did. Yeah, we could do the knock the nexus. So let me see if what is what is on that is U S D S E K. What currency is this? Uh, the Swedish krona. I think we may have looked at it. I'm not sure. One of my traders, I think, did this. I'm not sure if he, he can probably help me, Vizian. I'm not sure if it's the same chart. We can take a look at it. Is this correct? I'm not sure these exist. Is this the chart you guys were asking for, for us to do? I'm, I'm not sure we have enough chart here to do any analysis. It wouldn't make much sense for you. I can tell you what it's going to do right now in terms of if you're looking for, oh, by the way, you have a perfect pattern here. You don't want it better than this, right? You have a perfect buy setup. You're in a consolidation, and this consolidation is going to break to the upside, right? I think that is pretty clear. That's a nice consolidation there to buy, but we are in the weekly, so let's go in the daily and look at that. It's a wedge. Almost 90% show that's a wedge. I think all of you know you can have an A wave down, an A. A B, a C, a D, you're looking for an E, this should come back here low. Here's the, here's the thing about wedge. The E wave does not always have to come to the bottom. The E wedge could go midway and then take off. But the trade will confirm itself in the break of the pattern. So you will have to wait for this to break the pattern. There is still the chance that this E wave could come right back from there to here and then go up back. The trade you're looking for is a big trade to the upside. 
not within the pattern, but a bigger trade to the upside. This one is pretty easy. This one didn't take, this took me three minutes. You look at it, you see the pattern and you know where you're going upside, right? That's like simple, but this is a pretty good trade if you can trade this. I'm not sure I can trade it. I'll have to check it because this would be a very nice trade to the upside. Yep, very nice trade. So good one. You guys can keep an eye on this one. Which other ones you want the US knock? Let's look at that then. Oh, I have this, sorry. I, I actually did some work on it. I just deleted it. It's in this kind of an ending diagonal looking structure. See that? Ending diagonal structures, you always have to let them prove their ending diagonal structures. Remember the cat didn't prove it, it's an ending diagonal structure. They have to break the structure before you sell. This one is going up, they're breaking the structure to the outer side. Not exactly, the line just moved. It's like this. Right? So you gotta move up, a move down, a move up. If you get a corrective structure to the downside, if you get this corrective structure to the downside, look for one more up. Right? If they keep going up, you should not be buying. At that point there, you're not a buyer. But if they come down, depends on how they come down. Two ways this thing could come down. It could come down very fast. You correct and then you sell. It comes down very slow. And you look for a trade up back to the top. Eventually, this pattern will come down. This pattern here will come down. That's a long way from now. Remember, I'm at the daily chart. So that's on the weekly, you can see it much better. That this pattern eventually is going to fail. This pattern here will fail at some point and then come down. There's a big move to the downside. But that will take a long time. This is a weekly chart. So that's a long way from now, right? But it's a very nice pattern, by the way. We're not going to go into teaching you patterns. I'm just showing you two charts and how we can do it in a couple minutes, right? So we're not going to go into the patterns and the names and everything like that. What else? That's for a six weeks course. What else do we want? Uh, the owner of the question, please, USDTRY. Did we do that? We didn't do that. Let's do it then. I thought we just did this. Yep, I had this chart on. That's why we didn't do it. See, if you had the chart on, when you put it up, immediately your 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 analysis comes up back. So this is going up. We're going to get more upside definitely in this. You can see that on the weekly and the daily. Let's see what it's doing. Daily, it's crawling up slowly. Four hour. Four hour, you're in this pattern here. And this pattern looks like it's about to end, right? You've got an impulse up, you've got a correction, you've got an next impulse, you've got a correction, you're probably getting your last impulse and then you're gonna look for a downside. So, you may get a bite to the top and then that's it, it's likely gonna come down. Okay, let's get some more questions, enough of, of those charts. I think that, did that help you with the person who's asking the question. You need to know the patterns. That's it's very simple. You have to you have to know the patterns. If you know the patterns, one glance at the chart and you can tell what pattern you're looking at. Right? If you don't know the patterns, you're gonna do all kind of crazy stuff. You're gonna put some moving averages, you're gonna put some line in some incorrect trading um, trending lines, you're gonna put two I don't know, some guys put square boxes in it and then they're saying whatever they call it, I don't know what they call it and put one square box next to the next one and then one more here and then it has one more day before it's finished. I don't know who tell him that. God heaven knows how you know the correction has one more days, right? Or I, I see something like this written in a chart. Well, it fails, the chart fails to do that. The chart is doing what it's doing. The chart is not failing to do anything. The chart is not, you know, or, or, or it's, it's, it's a bad chart or, or those, you know, those crazy stuff like head fakes and the chart is not doing all those stuff, guys. The chart is statistics. The statistics is just data. They're just showing you what happened. That is all. It's data to tell you where the price went. It's not fake. It's not false. It's not bad it's not doing you know nonsense it doesn't fail to do something it's just the chart 
It's not doing anything. It doesn't have a plan that it's going to be failed to do, right? Or it's six days in here and it, it, it fails to break it in six days. And all of that is, where did, where do you guys get those stuff from? I mean, honestly, where you got to pull those stuff out from somewhere. Because the chart has nothing to do with all of that. that was, all of that is your fantasy. All you have to do is look at what the chart is doing and make a decision of what it could do, where it is likely going to go. You're just trying to predict where the chart is likely going to go based on what the chart is doing right now. That's it. You're not trying to tell the chart what to do. You're not trying to say the chart is doing the wrong thing. It's making a fake, it's false, false breakout, fake head, fake and all. It's not doing all this stuff. It's doing what it's doing. Your job is to look at it, analyze it and say, based on what it is doing now, this is what I think it could do because this thing repeats itself over and over. That is all. I look at the chart. I didn't see anything fake in the chart. All I said, okay, based on this pattern, because this is a pattern that repeats itself, we're, it is likely going to come to the top. And at this point, at this point, it is likely, there is a high probability that this chart is going to come down based on the structure. That's it. Not on a false something, not on a head fake, not on some square boxes you put in it, not on some moving averages, not on some... Uh, Big uh, long leg dojis, not on short leg dojis, not on anything. Just based on what the structure does, how the structure behaves. Not based on my moving averages, holding it, it's bouncing off the two to two, two hundred uh, days MA and all of that. It's not bouncing off anything. It's not even bouncing off any trend line, and it's not that trend line has nothing to do with it. That trend line is just showing me what the pattern looks like. That is all. I'm just using that trend line to box the pattern up, to show me the pattern. Show me, is it a triangle? Is it a wedge? It is, is, it, is it a, a diamond? Is it a, a whatever that is? The two lines are showing me what that structure looks like. And because we know what structures it could make, we know what are the probabilities of these structure, we know how these structure repeats themselves, we make, that, we make our, uh, our forecast based on that. And if it plays out that way, bingo you win it. If it doesn't, let it go. Don't force it. That's all. That is what trading is about. And stop trying to be a winner or to be a loser or to say, well, it has to respect this or it has to respect that or it's going to respect this bat pattern or it has to respect that, that cat pattern or whatever. It's not going to do all those stuff. You guys just have to learn to respect the chart. Show some respect to the chart. Stop in insisting the chart is giving you fake something. It's not giving you anything fake. You have to learn to read what it's giving you. And traders keep repeating those things. I don't know where they get it from. I honestly don't. I have no clue what they're talking about. Right? And they, they put a lot of lines that go up and down moving averages. And somehow the chart is supposed to respect that moving average or respect some horizontal line they put in it. Oh, it's hitting support. It's going to bounce. Who told you that? I mean, where did you get it from that there's a support or there's a resistance there? There isn't. There isn't any. The chart is doing what it's going to do. Unless you guys accept that the chart is doing what it's doing and it's not respecting any, any, any line that you put there, you're going to have problems trading your lines. I don't trade these lines. People ask me. I said, no, those lines are not for me to trade them. That's not a point. When I said we are looking for a breakout, we're looking for a breakout of a structure, not the line. And when it breaks that structure, it still has to confirm to me that the structure is totally break. Let's go back to the Pong Oz. Here is a good reason. It's not about breaking the line and I'm going to be in that trade. It broke the line. Am I in the trade? No. Right? Remember this. It broke this line. Are we in the trade? No. Because it's not important that it break that line. It's important when it breaks that line. What is it telling me? Is the structure over? That's what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at this chart and said, okay, what is the chart? telling me? What is this structure doing? That's it. It's what is the structure doing? It's not about it breaking the line. Oh, you put a line. It broke the line. Should I buy now? How do I know? I have no clue what you're doing. That's your call. You want to buy, buy. You want to sell, sell. I'm waiting for the structure to prove to me that that structure that they were making is over. And now I can join the trade for the impulse to the upside. So far, I'm looking at this chart. I have no clue that that structure is over. You see how simple it is? That is what it's all about. It's not about breaking the line. 
those lines have very little value. The line is just telling me that it was making this pattern, and that pattern is over. Is it making another pattern? Is it making a B wave structure that is going to break to the downside? Maybe I'm looking at it and I'm saying, hey, this looks like a B wave structure that could come down and then make a more complex structure before it goes back up. So am I in a buy? No. Uh, will I be in a buy if it starts to prove to me it's, it's making an impulse and not a corrective structure for a downside? Sure, I'll be in it. I just need to see enough proof of that. And that's what I train people to do. That's what I do and that's what I train my traders to do. When I see that there is enough proof of that impulse proving it's going to go as an impulse and not a corrective structure for a B wave, I'll be in the trade. That is what's simple. Keep it simple. You cannot make it simpler than that. Take off all those nonsense you're putting in the chart. These arrows I'm just putting to show you what I think, the direction I think it's going to go, not where it's going but the direction I think this chart is going to go. I think there will be a corrective structure to the downside, not necessary to the 618 fib, but to the downside. Then I think there will be a move to the upside, not necessarily exactly from the spot where the arrow is, but a sense of direction. The arrows I'm putting is to give you guys a sense of direction. What am I looking for? When I post this setup, what, I, what I'm saying to you is that, guys, I, I'm looking at this first impulse here, and I'm, I'm waiting for it to correct. So I said, don't jump in. Wait for it to make a corrective structure. And if the corrective structure proves that it's over, you can take the trade to the upside. That's all the arrows are telling you. Nothing more. They're not saying buy. They're not saying sell. They're not telling you what it's going to do. They're, telling you a, they're giving you a sense of direction in which this is going to go. I have to give you some sense of direction, right? That, that's what I do. That's, it's so simple. Keep it simple. Don't, don't, don't try to make it complicated. And don't try to prove you're a winner. There are people who say, well, my pattern worked. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, good for you. Oh, you can tell me about the amount of trader who just wants something, a magic formula, like, I don't know, some I saw. I, I can't show it, right, because I can't show people stuff. But I was looking on, on, um, on LinkedIn. And I saw a very, very, I mean, a very big trader, well-known trader, worked on Wall Street, selling people crap, literally selling people crap, right? And I looked at what he's saying. He's selling you, he's, what is number one thing he's teaching you, the behind the door thing. He's teaching you behind the door. It's called behind the door something. I can't remember what it is. Well, he's telling you what is happening behind the doors. My question is, how the hell do you know what is happening behind the doors? Are you working for the CIA or the KGB or who? I mean, Mossad, what, what, how do you know what's happening behind the doors? You don't have a clue you're talking about. You're selling people crap, right? Because if you tell me you know what's happening behind the doors and you're just trading, you're teaching some retail traders how to trade, something is wrong with you or something is wrong with me if I buy that. Because if you knew what was happening behind the doors, you would never be out here telling everybody, I'll tell you what's behind the doors. You'll probably be dead. If you try to tell people what's happening behind the doors because you know it, you'll be a dead person, not a life person. People who knows what happened behind the doors, they shut their mouth. They don't tell anybody what's happening behind the doors because they will not remain alive for very long, right? So when I, that's the first thing here. When I saw that, I, I started, you know, like, who the hell is going to buy this crap from you? But people buy it because he did work on Wall Street. I don't know what happened to his career on Wall Street, but he did work there for a while, right? So you know, you know, and traders don't listen, traders don't even think this thing through. They just grab it. Oh, this guy's gonna tell me what happened behind the wall, behind the wall, so I'll know how to trade. He's gonna tell me the secret. He doesn't know crap about the secret. If he knew it, he wouldn't be talking to you. He wouldn't be selling you anything. If I know the secret of how what's happening in the world of trading, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys. Nobody tells me those secrets. I'm in my room alone looking at charts and structure. Where would I learn the secrets from? Right. And that's what you guys have to listen to, right? Yeah, he knows the secret behind the walls, what's happening. He's going to give you, you know, go to LinkedIn and check it. Uh, you know, I saw it and I was like, and he's a very popular guy. He has, you know, thousands and thousands of traders following him. And they believe it. They believe those stuff. That's the funny thing. They do believe those stuff. People believe that. You know, one guy posted in Trading View that, the, that silver actually went up because of the late reaction of Russia bombing Syria. Hey, silver is down. Russia is still bombing Syria. Why the hell is it not going up? 
It was supposed to go up, right? Russia is still bombing in Syria. Silver is coming down. What happened? What, hap- what, what, what happened to the reaction? Pure nonsense. And they literally post these things as if they know what they're talking about. They have confidence in it. Right? They know that this thing is going down, going up because of the bombing. Right? They're making silver bombs. That's why it's going up. You have a good point, maybe. You know, don't listen to that, guys. Look at the, the only thing we can do is look at patterns. We can look at the structure. We can look at patterns. We know these patterns repeat themselves with a very high probability, and we try to trade that. It's that simple. You use a money management. You use very good money management to limit your loss if you're wrong, and you will be wrong sometimes. You use a good money management strategy to limit the loss. When you're correct, you want it to run as far as it could go, five, six, ten times your risk. And if you win two when you lose one, you're still winning. That's how simple trading is. I don't have magic. I look at the structure. I've learned these structures. I know these structures. I know what they look like. I know how they behave. And you can do it because it's here in front of you. I'm not giving you any magical thing. I'm showing you what's in front of you. The only thing I'm showing you is how to understand it and how to analyze it. I'm not using a secret thing. I'm telling you, I'm looking at the chart. I said, you look at the chart. And this is how you should analyze the chart. And if you analyze the chart this way, and you learn to read the structures this way, this is what you will see. And when you see this, it will repeat itself over and over. As it repeats itself over and over, you will have good trades. So it's breaking. The candle is going up. Don't jump into it. Don't jump into it. Wait. Let that candle stop. If you jump into that candle, you will watch it reverse. Right? Don't you're not losing anything. Let me show you let me show you why that reaction should not be there. That emotional reaction to the candle should not be there. Immediately go to the daily charts. If you're getting that reaction, this is what you need to do. Go to the daily charts and said, Let me take everything out so I could help you guys here. If you're in a lower time frame chart and emotions, go here and set up. Oh, it's not going anywhere as yet. Get rid of that emotion of wanting to chase the candle. Because the trade you're looking for is the break of this structure. Basically, you're looking for a trade that will take you to this level. This is what I'm looking at. If they break this structure, we're going to have a move that is equivalent to this one. The trade I'm looking for is a move that will be equivalent to this move. I'm looking at this structure, and I said the last time they did this, they did this. So if they do this and they break out, they're going to do that. And this is the trade you want. Right? So don't chase, don't chase the 15-minute candle. That is the trade you're looking for. Go down now. You're going down slowly to where you want the trade. You're inside of this pattern. Can you get the trade inside of the pattern? Sure. You want it to break this pattern. And it did break that pattern. So are you ready to go in the trade? No, you're not ready to go in the trade. Because if you jump into that trade, this is what it's likely going to do. I want you to look at it that every time they break a pattern, right, what they did. So when they broke this pattern, what they did, they went up back. They went up back, and then they come down. What are the chances this could do this? And then do that. Just look at these two here. And tell me, look at this and tell me what are the chances it could do this. And then go back up there. Right? So don't jump into that little candle because you have a, a line there and it went above the line. Look at the structure. Understand what the structure is doing. Learn to read the structure correctly. And then you will trade correctly. So let's go. We are breaking. Good for all of us. Now, let's go to our one hour and see if we have a trade, 15 minutes. So we are breaking out of that, and we are breaking out of this one. What are the chances you're doing this? And this candle stops exactly at this point here and starts to go down back like this. And you jump in the candle right here. All 
right? You're going to get this, you're going to get that, and you're going to have this, and then you're going to get the trade to the upside. So is it going to go up? Very likely it could go up. But if it's going to go up, you have to wait for the proof that it's going to go up. And you have a trade that will go all the way to this top here. And then you have a trade out of this structure. So there's no need to change the candle. Put it in a one-hour candle and wait for that one hour to close. Right? Simple. It's that easy. Don't chase the candles. Pong is a nice one. Pong is going up. And keep your eyes on the pong because we want this pong trade. If this pong breaks, we want this trade. If it breaks to the upside, we want it, definitely. Let it go. Let it break. <laughs> pray for you. That's a good one, yes. And that's what most traders do. They jump in the trade and then they start to pray, right? God, this is the last time I'll do it. I'll never repeat that mistake again. I'll never jump in a candle again, right? Especially when it starts to go against you. Uh, which time frame should it break? It's not about the time frame it should break. It's about what the structure is doing. So I'm looking at it. Um, let's go back. Uh, sorry, uh, we're in the... I think you're talking about the Pong Oz, right? So let's go back to the Pong Oz. I want this one-hour candle to close solidly. I want them to negate this structure that I'm in, this structure here. See that structure I'm in there? They made a move up. They made a move down. They made a move up. They made a move down. They're making a move up. I want them to go out of this, and I want it to pull back right into the same area that it is, and then I'll take that trade to go up. Because if it doesn't negate that structure, then it is likely making that structure. It has to break the structure to tell me that structure has no validity to what I'm looking at right now. And if it doesn't, then I'll be willing to take the trade. But if it does have validity to the structure, then it's a B wave structure in a pattern that has an A wave, a B wave, and we'll be looking for a C wave. So if you jump into the buy, you better make sure you get it to positive because it could come. And the next thing you know, it starts to reverse back like this. Now, I'm not saying that is what it's going to do, but I said that is likely if you're not careful. Right? See how long they consolidated here? That's a very long consolidation. So I'll wait to see. I'll wait for them to prove, and then I'll take the trade. So, okay, guys. Seems no more questions. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I would see all of you. I think twice a day may be too much. So maybe we could make only the New York session. Would that be okay with everybody? Just the New York session? Because we get more people in the New York session than we get in the London session. So we'll probably, from tomorrow, we'll only open it for everybody in the New York session so that I can have some time with my traders in the London session as well. So I'll post that out today, and I'll see all of you guys tomorrow in the New York session. Take care. Trade with care. Have a nice day. All right. Thanks for coming. Don't forget to share the oh the YouTube. Sorry, the YouTube link. Let me give you the YouTube link. You can get it. I'll put it there for you guys. Let me just go to where it is. Yep, this is the YouTube link. All right. Let me just yep. All the, the trades are there. Let me just copy it and paste it for you. You got it there now, so you can check all the videos. Don't forget to check them. You can make your comments. You can click the likes if you like them. And don't forget to watch them. Right? You can share the links with, with friends if you have in any group you're in. And welcome to do that. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.